Welcome to the largest megacorp in Union Space, GMS, General Massive Systems. Or... Space Walmart. So the first question that might come up, especially if you've seen the previous two videos, is... Where does GMS sit? Compared to the other manufacturers? So it's kind of funky. So uh, in the definition of the Big Four, when it comes to the main manufacturers, there's the gameplay version of the Big Four, which covers where you get your mechs from as a Lancer. But then there's the in-universe version of the Big Four, which is talking about the four biggest corporations, in which Horus doesn't really count as a member because it's not really a corporation. No, the title of the largest corporation and the oldest amongst the Big Four, the lore version of the Big Four, is GMS. And with oldest, it rivals and is older than IPSN, which can trace its origins back to the Theseus shipyard. GMS is old, namely because it was founded roughly during the early parts of the uh, earlier colonial expansion era, and due to its early investments within the expansion period and all those other colonies and equipment and everything when Union was first building itself up, it just became the standard. It just became standardized through owning almost everything. Or not everything, but a part of everything. Ship parts? You think that's just IPSN? Nope, GMS has some of that. Military grade weapons equipment? Pff, you're looking at all of that in the book. CompCon, NHP? Yep, yep, well... CompCon at least. NHP... not sure. In short, they're everywhere, from just a basic data slate within your hand, to parts within a massive spaceship. Your local train station, probably prefab from something based off of it, to the basis for almost every generalist chassis. The Everest. Though in part of being everywhere and its oldest ties all the way back to its founding on Cradle, it's highly associated and tied with Union, which honestly is a really fun aspect of it, because one, a lot of its internal politics still work with it. But whenever a Union presence is newly felt on a planet, the first thing that most common people see is GMS, not Union. Some of these distant diasporan worlds only have one Union administrator placed on them, yet all of a sudden, all the tech after joining Union? GMS. That stark, gray, general function, reliable. It has this weird double-edged appearance of when Union is finally on a planet and the planet has access to GMS prints. It's a real utilitarian gray. <laughs> Standard, boxy, nowhere near complex or flashy, which aligns with the impression a lot of people have on Union. Box, utility, standard gray. It doesn't help that the actual uniform colors of Union are gray and white. Interesting mix that. Just, you know, standard gray parts, standard gray suit, standard gray galactic power. But outside of that, there's not much to talk about. Yes, oldest, yes, mostly associated with Union, that interesting little political bit of utility, bureaucracy, galactic empire, but there isn't a lot on it. It's not personalized, it's not specialized, it is the galactic standard. Your McDonald's, your Walmart, etc. But to be fair, that's a gap that needs to be filled. Due to their extreme close association with Union and Cradle, they are not really their own corpo state? Kind of. I mean, a lot of people see them as the Union corpo state. Again, that whole thing of the utility gray, gray suit, etc. It's the backbone. You know? The humble, everywhere, general utility, your prints for colonies, your prints for prefabs, trains, cities, settlements, ship parts. Reliable. Baseline. And while lore-wise they don't seem to be really that flashy, they were the first company to make mechs. Out of the first hard suits. Or, um, up-armored arms. Uh, blah, blah, blah. While a lot of their lore doesn't seem that flashy, they were the first megacorp to actually make mechs out of the first up-armored hard suits. In the year 4,500U, we'd have our first chassis. On Ross Shamra. The homeworld of Harrison Armory. Ah, that old Union Seccom weapons branch. Investments pay off for Harrison. But speaking of said mech, you can actually pick one up. Well, not even just pick one up, you start with it. It is the generalist chassis that is in the entirety of Union space, which has thousands, if not probably, actually, probably way more <laughs> localized patterns. And due to its thousands of localized frames, we have a blessing and a curse, and it's the Everest.
It's... Yep. That's the mountain. The frame itself has no picture or art, but it is the starting frame and has actual stats that can carry it honestly through a whole game. It's not really the start or prologue to getting into mechs. You could build an entire character revolving around just using an Everest. And due to the fact it has dozens of localized patterns and is really easily changeable parts, you can use any picture you want. And it's still pretty much be canonical, or at least fit in. Even when it comes to specialization or core bonuses, all the special abilities of the Everest are just do things better or have an additional action. <laughs> a lot of weapon mounts, a large variety amongst them, pretty decent stats, and especially with building up your pilot and your talents and the various equipment you can pick up with it and take from other licenses, you can make some busted stuff. It's the Swiss Army Knife, but you need to get a lot of the knives and the tools, you know, just take them from over here, put them in here. That isn't to say it starts empty. It is still a Swiss army knife. That's because of all the other equipment you get. So while everything else, weapons, systems, upgrades, frames, locked behind those licenses, the Everest, you get out the gate, and everything else, GMS, you also get out the gate. And that covers a wide range of things. When it comes to weapons, you want knives, pistols, guns. Hey, that's your type one weapons right there. You know, your usual kinetics, reliable, easily replaceable parts and repairs. What about energy? You know, plasma sheathed weapons, laser guns, plasma guns. You've got type two. Type three, the miscellaneous category. We go from heavy ordnance to something called exotic. But you know, you have your smart weapons, which is hordes of nanites, which is half hanger, half factory. Fire it out, goes after them. And the types really don't matter. It's just in the book and a lot of the descriptions on like, hey, this is where this weapon sits within GMS, roughly patterned together. But, you know, assault rifles, rocket pods, giant blades, plasma sheathed blades, energy weapons, beam weapons, nanite swarms. You've got it. All out the gate from level zero. And because of that, you can add any of these to your other licenses, and you probably will. Namely just because you can't fill out everything early levels from a single license. So while we're talking about everything else you'd get from a different license of another mech, when it comes to everything GMS and Everest, you have it. Just put it on. That also stretches towards their systems, which range from things you understand, you know, mines, grenades, smoke charges, cover, shields, but then also custom paint job. Now custom paint job, whenever your mech would reach zero HP and about to lose a structure, you just roll a D6 on a six, it just scratched the paint, and you can't use it again for that scene. Essentially encounter, but a one in six chance, just every encounter go like, yep, nope, that didn't, that, nope, that didn't do that. Actually, it might take a repair, but just a custom paint job. It's not worth that many system points. You can just slap it onto a mech to get that additional just D6 chance. And then personalizations, that just adds two HP, which is actually really good because that's for every structure on a mech. Then even has a description within it that just says like, hey, talk to your GM. Maybe your mech gives you accuracy on a certain bonus related to said personalization. You can actually have it do something or at least give you a dice bonus when doing something. Slap an easy AI unit into it so it can function on its own or move around without you. Extra storage space or an extra place for a pilot or not pilot, but like a passenger of some kind. Generalist things that you can easily slap on any of these other chassis that we've talked about or more that we still have to talk about. Just simple, all round, easy to apply things that you can slap onto any chassis and it's not a bad thing. That even stretches to their core bonuses, which we haven't really talked about core bonuses yet. I'm gonna talk about those in their own video, but the thing is everything else in the core bonuses, highly specialized, just a general buff to all your chassis. Less tied to system points, more tied to its own thing. While Horus stuff is cool, same with Harrison Armory, the generalist stuff within GMS. Hey, do you want an extra weapon mount? Do you want to just do an extra dice of damage per round? Do you want to potentially just get your core ability back on a refund and heal automatically that round? There are so many really good just general upgrades within GMS. Again, it's the galactic standard, even to the point of the equipment you're using within game, not just lore wise, in the fact that all these other specializations have to make up for something because GMS already fills a void. So next time you're designing your chassis or planning out a character, give a second look at the Everest. 
and GMS in general. They're there. Open 24 7. At a discount. No, this comes out in December. This comes out in December.